what's up guys? We're down here. It's Friday, Labor Day weekend. We're out at beautiful Clearwater Beach here at the Hyatt Hotel, down on the strip in Clearwater, right on the beach. And we couldn't ask for better weather than this. Beautiful blue skies, some awesome white puffy clouds. My Titan brother and family, Big Drew down here with me. Oh yeah, we're pumped and ready for a great weekend and we're just getting started. So come here and check it out. We're going to show you this amazing view on Clearwater Beach. If you've never been here before, it's really a spectacular thing. If you have been here before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? In the nation, Clearwater is one of the best beaches in the world. Look at all that beautiful white, beautiful sand down there, Pier 60 on the right, and that gorgeous ocean out there. That's the Gulf of Mexico. It's usually pretty warm, especially in the summertime right now. So we're probably going to go down there and check it out, enjoy that beach life, salt life, and that's what Florida is all about. So if you live in Florida, take advantage of it. If you're not from Florida, you really need to come down vacation, check out Titan Medical Center's headquarters in Tampa, and then shoot over to Clearwater Beach for an amazing view, an amazing time, for amazing memories that you're going to have. Right now we're outside the hotel and this is really cool because we usually go down to St. Pete Beach and we go to the Don Cesar, but there's not a lot of stuff down there. Like you just can't walk out of the hotel and like walk somewhere really cool. Well down here, you're in Clearwater, you've got all this stuff. So there's a pizza place right there. There's a hamburger place right here. There's an ice cream shop right there. It's very cool guys. This is some of the stuff that I don't get to see day to day in Clearwater. I actually was talking to my son on the way down here. I'm like, cause he's 12. I'm like, when was the last time you remember coming to Clearwater Beach? He's like when I was five years old. That's horrible. Like, I take them to St. Pete Beach at least three or four times a year, but Clearwater is a gem, right? It's a polished diamond down here. It's just a pain in the butt sometimes to drive down here, but it's just as far, so I don't know why we don't come down here. But there's a lot of stuff to do out here, so it's really cool to check out new locations like this. Being active, I can't stress it enough, and being active if you have family or loved ones, even if you're by yourself. Let's say you have no family, you have no loved ones come out enjoy this like live life because life is only given to you one time you have one chance to live so if you don't take advantage of all the things that you want to do you're going to die with regrets and you never know when you're going to go because that day is never promised or told um, until it happens and at that point it's too late so that's just some advice for me to you guys you know that's why i try to live the best possible way obviously i plan for the future but i gotta live in the moment too sometimes so this is just one of those moments you guys want to go in the ocean the ocean. So since we're on the beach and we're talking about the ocean, let's talk about some of the health benefits. We know it's good for the skin. We know it's good to, you know, if you got cuts on you and stuff like that for cleaning them to a certain extent. Um, it's just all, all overall good for your skin, even in pools. So a lot of pools were chlorine based. Now you're starting to see a lot more saltwater pools. There's a reason because your body is ultimately sending a whole bunch of chemicals. Yeah, we have a salt water pool in my building. I'll take that over the chlorine any day. Especially if you guys are shaving, if you guys shave your face, shave your body, shave oh, your yeah. head, that salt's very good. It acts as a yeah. natural antiseptic. And also too guys, people don't realize you can exfoliate with some clean sand. Oh yeah. So grab some grab some sand, just rub it on your skin, yep. with a little bit of that sea water, exfoliate, yep. rinse off, and then lay out and let that vitamin be soak it up. Stuff works. God's great. natural gift to us. This is one of the things. Everything he provided for us has a use, right? And uh, we just need to get back to that. Be you know, as minimal as possible, I guess. I mean, trust me, I like my technology, I like my toys, I like the new found things that they come up with. But these old natural things like this are more homeopathic, I guess. Yeah. Somebody's asking us about homeopathic medicine. Right, right. Um, and this is something that comes from the earth, so it's good for you guys. Hi, my name is David O. Hensley, and I've been a patient and a loyal customer of Titan Medical Center now for over eight years. And I could not be more happier to be here today to share you my experience with Titan Medical Center and give you my testimonial. Well, before Titan, I noticed myself being a little 
tired, more tired than normal. I was lagging in the gym, lagging in the bedroom. I was not feeling up to par nor my, because I'm a very hyper person to begin with. So for me not to have the levels of energy I was used to was becoming concerning to me. So that's why I made a decision to come to Titan Medical Center. And once I made that decision and I got my blood work done, they actually showed me what my body was not producing anymore. And after 40 years old, you know, our body stopped producing natural testosterone, natural energy, libido, everything that we need to survive and have a functioning, full, healthy lifestyle. So once I decided to make the call to Titan, got my labs done, it was then they customized the therapy program just for me, and I cannot be more happier than I have ever been. As soon as I walk in that bedroom, I want to feel like the man I am. As soon as I get up and start my day, I want to feel like I can conquer and challenge the day. And that's what Titan Medical Center provided for me, the energy and the strength to do so. So the Titan therapies I use are first off the Titan Complete, which is my must have daily injectable. It gets me the energy levels that I need. It, feels, it makes me feel like my immune system is even stronger than I've ever before. I use the Hercules Potion. Now with the Hercules Potion, I like to do about 20 minutes before my workouts, I do side injections. So like if I'm doing chest and tries, I do 50 I use, 50 in each one. Go to the gym and the amount of pump I get is insane. I can actually do Hercules Potion and just go for a jog and I feel like I went to the gym for an hour and trained. The muscle density, the vascularity, the hardness is insane and I love it. Without a doubt, it's one of my therapies I can't do without. Now they also have me on testosterone replacement therapy, which is great, and HCG, and the anti-estrogen blocking pills, which is a must have because you know, wasted testosterone is gonna get converted to estrogen and we don't need to be crying at a commercial. We don't need to be upset, we don't need to be. So having the right amount of hormones balanced in your body, done professionally, you know, custom, that is so important to maintaining this healthy lifestyle. My medical Titan provider and service was excellent. In fact, it was the simplest thing is making a phone call. Once I made the phone call, once I came to the office, they, they, they reassured me how easy it would be. Once I got my labs done, then it was smooth sailing from there. They go over the top to make sure that you are getting what you need for your body. You know, the nurse practitioner, the doctors here, the whole crew, the staff, they make it comfortable, they make it simple, they make it easy, educational, and informative. And that's so, it's vital. I mean, you, a lot of these companies out there, when you go see them, they'll sell you what you need or what's this and that. They'll try to sell you on some of these things and your body doesn't need that. Titan is, they're loyal to making sure their customers are taken care of and their body is, is what exactly what it needs. Am I happy as a Titan patient? Uh, I, I'm over the moon happy, ecstatic. It's, happiness is like a word right about here. A Titan is up here. And that's how I feel every day. It's like when, when I get asked, am I happy with Titan Medical? Over the moon. I could not be more happier. Thank you again, Time Medical, for all you've done for me, the people I've sent you, my friends, my clients. I cannot be more happier. Thanks again. Hey guys, today I wanna to explain to you guys MK677 Ibutamorn. I get a lot of questions about this therapy here at Titan Medical Center. So let's break it down and kind of talk about it so you guys have a better understanding of how this therapy could possibly help you. So Ibutamortin, MK677. First, what is it? It's an oral GHRH peptide. That means it's a growth hormone releasing hormone peptide. What is that gonna do for you? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna stimulate your own pituitary, produce your own natural growth hormone that's gonna then go down to your liver and convert into IGF-1. At that point, you're gonna get all these benefits from that. Let's talk about those benefits because that's what it's really all about, right? So we're talking about lipolysis, so destroying fat, getting lean quality mass, being able to put on more lean quality mass. Let's talk about the sleep benefits. So it increases REM sleep. And we know that sleep is very vital to our existence, day in and day out, for energy, recharging our body, revitalization, and of course, rebuilding more muscle for us. We want good, clean, clean, lean body mass. The other thing is, it should help hair, skin, nails. It will also kind of be like an anti-aging type therapy for you as well. By raising IGF-1 levels, we get all these great benefits. Plus, you're gonna talk about, you know, helping you increase bone density. So. If you have a poor bone density, this is gonna help you too as well. There's a lot of great benefits that go along with MK677 or Ibuda Morton. And another thing about this therapy is it's an oral therapy. So it's one capsule 
per day in our protocol. And our medical providers will go over all this information with you on your medical consultation and describe what the therapy is going to be like, all the benefits, and if there's any negatives to it. We want to make sure that you're educated about the therapies that you're taking. And that's what our job here is at Type Medical Center. Help you feel better, look better, and perform better, and also educating you on what you're taking. So I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or you want to become a patient and order MK677, or just find out more about it, call or text us at 727-389-3220. Tell them John sent you. I'll be happy to go over this therapy or any of our other great therapies that we offer. Thanks, guys. What's up guys, John here from Titan, and I wanna share with you guys the easiest, simplest way to get our new patient paperwork. It's really easy. Just pull out your smartphone, open the camera settings, and point directly at the QR code. Once you do that, it's gonna direct you right to our new patient paperwork, where you can fill it out online through your smartphone, your tablet, your desktop, or you can go old school, print it up, fill it out, send it back to us, fax it back to us, or even email it back to us. It's really up to you. We want to make sure you guys are looking your best, feeling your best, and performing at optimal levels daily. Who doesn't want to lose some weight, gain some lean muscle mass, maybe step it up in the bedroom, more energy, more focus. It's real simple and easy. Our medical providers can customize a regiment of our Titan Medical Center therapies that will help you achieve and reach your goals the healthiest way possible. So don't delay guys. Pull out that smartphone, open the camera settings, point at the QR code, fill out the new patient paperwork, and become part of the Titan Medical Center family today. I'm John from Titan, and I know our Titan family is looking forward to having you as our patient. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcuts. I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. <laughs> so, we're going to... What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right, Sunday edition, 11 a.m. every Sunday here on ABC. <laughs> so uh, for you guys out there, if you guys don't know or haven't tuned into the show, we cover tips, tricks, and things that are hopefully gonna help your relationship be a better one. Hopefully take that relationship up to a greater level, um, which should be more enjoyable for you and your partner. And hopefully you guys will learn some things. And if you guys had some bad relationships out there, maybe you guys will learn some tips and tricks. We'll hopefully turn the next relationship into a successful one. Everybody's got to go through the bad to get to the good. That's right. That's right. So it happens all the time. So, you know, just a disclaimer out there. We're not uh, we're not therapists. We're not... No, I do not have a degree in psychology or yeah, counseling. Yeah, yeah. So these However, just... <laughs> I've been through some very, very, very... Um, entertaining situations. Yep. So I'm more than happy to share my experiences with you guys. Life experience, the <laughs> best experience. That's better than a book, I'll tell you. For sure, for sure. Uh, so this week we're going to cover balancing your relationship and balancing your family, okay? Because, you know, in relationships, you know, if you have family or you both have family, you're going to probably include your family in your relationship at one time or another. Okay, whether it's you're just dating somebody for the first couple months and you decide, hey, listen, I'm going to introduce to my family. You're going to go to a, a holiday event or whatever it may be. So they're going to get some interaction from your partner and your family. And hopefully you want it to be a positive one. And hopefully they want it to be a positive one. Mm -hmm. But this does not happen all the time. Okay. And as you, you know, grow with somebody, you're going to be around their family more and they're going to be around you and so on and so on. Most of the time. Most of the time, right? Or 
you're just going to have some sort of interaction, you know, one way or sure. the other, right? So, you know, how to balance these things because that line sometimes gets crossed or it gets a real gray area blurry. as far as that goes, blurry. A little blurry. Um, and we don't really know where the sticking point should be on both sides. So let's talk about this. Let's like talk about some examples. Like, are we talking about, like, whose side to pick? Or, right. So... Know? Let's say, you know, you, you, you go over to, to the family's house, not your family, the, your significant other's family, and you guys have a disagreement about something, right? Um, I think that this is the best, and you think this is the best, and you guys kind of get into some sort of, I don't want to say argument, but yeah, some sort of argument, right, where you guys are kind of going back and forth about these things, and then they develop animosity against you. So at that point, then you go home and, you know, then your significant other is telling you, hey, listen, my mom's mad at you because you said this and, you know, I think that she was right. And, and then you're like, well, you know, what about me? So at that point, it kind of isolates the person too, right? Because they're like, well, you know, do you care about me more or do you care about them more? And that's a hard one to choose from because obviously if that's their mom and, you're the significant other it puts them in a hard place right hmm. it, sound familiar it does it, it goes in a, you go you go in a hard place right there so you know john's been there before <laughs> listen i've been there i know how it is yeah i know how it is um, too but you know i mean with that then, then you got to kind of set the boundaries like right, right so you say listen that's your family i know you love your family and all this but let's say we're, we've been together for four years at that point then you're going to kind of want to take my side on some things or make me a priority to a certain extent, right? And if you guys are married and have a family, then the rules change to a certain extent. At least it does when, with our relationship, the way it happened. Yeah, it should. Um, so, you know, when you get married and you have kids, then that becomes your core family. Where before, when you were getting raised as a kid and that was your dad or mom, that was your core family too, right? Now, you can still have your core family as far as your parents and stuff like that. But it's really not your core, right? So, you know, bless my dad because he's no longer here. But he instilled something into me. And yes, mom, I know you're watching. And I apologize in advance because I'm sure you're going to love this story. But he instilled in me that you had your core family at that time. You know, like your mom, your dad, brother, sister, whatever it might be. That's your core family, right? And then what he would always tell me, right, when I was a kid, is he would tell me, when you find the man that you love, right, and you marry this man, and you have your children with him and everything, I'm going to be second. Your mom's going to be second. We're going to come secondary to your core family. There's, We're not saying that mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, uncle and aunt brothers, and cousins, sister, brothers and sisters, yeah. we're not saying that they don't matter because of course they matter and they're important and we love them unconditionally of course mm -hmm. but there is your core family right so when it comes to that if you're in a relationship ultimately you know one of two things needs to happen in this particular scenario that john is discussing either a you are going to either way you look at it you should back up your significant other mm -hmm. right no matter what back them up a hundred percent and always have their back right now let's say you really do kind of agree with your mom right or you maybe kind of agree with your dad you're gonna still back them up at the time right mm -hmm. but maybe on the ride home or when you get to the house and things cool down a little bit or maybe wait a day or whatever it might be you know maybe say hey listen can I give you a different outlook on right. something? You right. know, like just just think about it. I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying she's right. I'm not saying he's right. right. All I'm saying is, you know, I'm trying to be neutral here. And maybe there was a different, maybe the different point you're not looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. listen, you could always be wrong. You could be right. Mm -hmm. There's a, plenty of different ways mm -hmm. you could spin something, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the way I was taught anyway, is that I have to always have my husband's back. Mm -hmm no matter what. Mm -hmm. So even in public, right? Mm -hmm. If he's wrong, I'm going to back him up. Right. In my family, if he's wrong, I'm still going to back him up. Right. I might step outside and be like, hey, that wasn't right. But then I always back him up. Mm -hmm. So I really do think, you know, it, I, and sometimes it gets blurry because, you know, what if they're really close to their mom and dad? You know, maybe they, you might feel like they put your mom or dad first, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean I, me and John personally went through this with his dad. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And I love Pete. You know, he's me and him are actually pretty close and come to find out we're a lot alike. <laughs> and um, that's probably why we didn't get along. <laughs> um, and we both have very strong personalities. So, you know, us screaming across the kitchen when John, poor John's in the middle, like, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I have my pregnant wife over here and my dad and they're screaming at each other. And I didn't know. I mean, do you remember that? I remember. So he, we've been in those crossroads. So we're not even talking about like, hey, you know, do this, do that. We're telling you, hey, guess guys, we've been there. Mm-hmm. We know what it feels like. Absolutely. He knows what it feels like to be in the middle. For sure. I know what it feels like to be in the middle and have to choose between, you know, what my dad said and what he's saying. And what, what, do, what do you do? How do you know what's right and wrong? Right. You know, so... There's a fine line, but you know if you if you've been with the person for two weeks, eh, yeah, I can't give you I can't give you too much yeah. to go there. There right? you might you know <laughs> you might you might not have to take sides, right? But, but if you invested like four or five, you know, even two or three years, that's a long time to be with somebody. Right. If you're living with them, you know, you know you're you're having some sort of future, you know, at that point, then you're gonna have to start you know taking their side to a certain extent. And then if they're wrong, having a discussion with them afterwards and then trying to find a resolution to the problem maybe find they had resolution. with the family member, right? But, you know, if those family members don't, if they don't want to, they don't, listen, if there's a problem with the family member and your significant other it was like, you know, finally after a little bit, like, okay, I, I understand what you're saying, honey. You know what? I'll, I'll apologize or I'll at least try to make it right. They try to make that effort. And then if that family member is like, well, I don't care or it doesn't matter to me, or I don't want to hear it, and then they just keep, you know, just downgrading that person, or degrading that person, excuse me. At that point, then, you know, then you got to take your, your partner's side and be like, well, listen, you know, they're trying to at least step up the game and, and do this to make things right. And at that point, you know, you're not. So then you got to ask them, like, well, why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you supporting my relationship and or my who I love, other? right. Because, you know, because then you're disrespecting me to a certain extent at that point because you're not respecting my choice and partner and who I want to bring around and who I want in my life and who I want near me. And, you know, that's kind of where, you know, you have to put that little line in the sand and be like, and some people listen, this never is the way learn. it's going to be. Some people never learn that line. Well, listen, the problem is with those people is that when you get to that extent and you're always worried about, let's say you're 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and you're worried about your mom and your brother and this and that at the house and you can't get away and you got to go all free time or you're calling them, you know, on your free time at the house all the time and it's an everyday event. Might be an issue. There might be an issue. Okay. <laughs> an issue. And at that point, if your partner's feeling isolated or is feeling like a third wheel or, or not feeling the love. Okay, that's gonna affect your relationship. Right. And then you know at that point, and then you're you're hammering down on them about your family or whatever problems that they're bringing, and then you're going back to your family and probably talking about some of these problems and making it even worse. It makes it bad. Don't do that. You're gonna you're gonna set yourself up for failure. And if you really care about that person, um, it's not gonna make them feel good at all. And at that point, that could that could be detrimental to the relationship mm-hmm. and the future of the relationship. Yeah. So you know the first thing we always say is is if you do have these problems, right? or anything you're doing, identify the problem. That's the first step in what you, what you want to do for resolution. Identify the problem, figure it out. At that point, communicate with your partner. That's a, the, the next thing, right? And then find some sort of resolution to that problem. Um, it could be a compromise. Sometimes you, know, you might have to step up to the plate and just, you might have to take a hit for your partner. You know, it, it, it this happens often. And the reason I'm saying it is because I'm telling you, me and John have been there, right? So, you know, he's had to take a hit for me because, you know, his dad just, you know, me and his dad, I'm telling you, we didn't get along at all. And at some point, I'll never forget it, too, because I, I, I would argue with John. And we get into arguments about it. Like, you're picking your dad over me. And he's like, I'm not picking sides. This is just what's going on. I'm trying to just, I'm basing these two things. This is exactly what happened. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're picking him over me. I'm supposed to be first. Me, me, me. I'm first, you know. And um, and this baby's first. <laughs> so either way you look at it, baby, no baby. Right. You know, he did have to step up at some point and be like, hey, listen. Whether you like her or not, she's not going anywhere. So you might as well try to figure out how you're going to like her because she's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I love her. She's not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. But you see how he stood up and said, hey, listen. And you may not want, I mean, some pa- some people fear their parents, mm-hmm. you know, or might fear what they do or might fear how they might react. Mm-hmm. And some people, especially very cultural people like mm-hmm. Greeks, Indians, 
you know, people that come of like super, super strong cultures, a lot of those people, they won't do it. If their parents say no, that is a golden no. That's right. And they, that's like, listen, my parents said no, and that's what it was. I don't care if I'm, you know, 25, 55, 65, they said no, I'm not doing it. You're, you know, we're, listen, it's 2021. You know, we're no longer in the 1920s. All right. I hate to say it. But, you know, it's, you're going to have to step up and you're going to if you really, truly love this person, you're going to have to find a compromise. Yeah. And if your parents are not or your sister, brother, whoever it is that's having the argument with your significant other, if your significant other is willing to apologize, they're going to need to meet at the halfway point mm -hmm. and say, hey, listen, we're just going to have to come to an amicable point. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to have to agree to disagree. And then guess what? We're going to move forward because we have many, many more events, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July that we want to spend together. All those times that you figure out, think about all the times that you really like you're going to miss out or you have to split it up. It's tough when you got to split it up. It's tough. I mean, what are you going to leave your significant other home while you go hang out with your parents? Well, that's the thing. If, if you can't do that. You know, if, if you're. I mean, you can. You want to bring your significant other to like holidays. Listen, even but it if won't be nice. Even if there's fighting. Right in, in 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 between your family and your loved one. Holidays, it's like an, an you know an unnamed rule. Under you the blanket. Put things aside. <laughs> Goes under the blanket. You be cordial. <laughs> one day at the holiday, you get through the holiday, and at that point, you can tell them to screw off. You know <laughs> that, but you, you've done it on the, the way out, right? You've done to the car. You've done it for By the, the family, way, right? By the way, one more thing, and it wasn't Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, the best thing to do is be cordial, <laughs> try to have a good holiday or whatever it is, and then just move on because, right. you know, you want you don't want to make your partner feel isolated from their family either, right? Right. And they, they shouldn't be doing that to you either, so it's a reciprocal thing. Yeah. Um, but at that point, you should be able to, you know, at least get by things. And your partner should make it a point to have you there. If a family member says, well, I'm not going to come if they come, then at that point, like, well, I guess I'm not going to come either then. Right. Right. You know, that's where you kind of stand your ground, you know, against your family, wherever it is. And like, listen, if you're not willing to accept this person. This person's part of me. Then you're not willing to accept me either. Why? Right. You know, and then kind of get through that. So these are just some of the things <laughs> that you guys can learn from us. It's an important one. It's, it's a big one. It's a big one. I think a lot of people have to deal with it because a lot of people, you know. I went there at my whole life. You know, so. relationships, you know, you're, you're meeting new people, new family members. They might you know, look at you, judge you, and at that point cause issues or it might be problems from before. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But just watch out for it. Try to do the right thing. Prioritize your relationship and your loved one. And just, you know, make sure you put that line in the sand that differentiates. Always have your partners back. All right? Always. So this has just been another Cupid's Corner with me and Sharice. We appreciate you guys all tuning in every Sunday at 11 a.m. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you then.